Jesus Christ is the Lamb slain before the foundations of the earth. In this study, God's Redemption Timeline, we discover that eternal God enters time so that He can redeem fallen man. The coming of Jesus Christ was not an emergency plan, but an eternal one. In this study, Evangelist Scott Pauley will encourage us to celebrate God's redemptive work accomplished by the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no story in the world more hopeful or more helpful than the story of salvation. There's nothing more exciting, more wonderful than the story of God's redemptive purposes with mankind. And friend, it ought to be deeply personal to you because it's your story and it's my story. As some people, when they talk about the story of salvation, think that that is limited to the gospel records. No, that's where the Lord Jesus... Uh, produced this amazing redemption for us. This is where we find the redemptive work of Jesus. Other people think, well, that's reserved for the book of Romans, that great doctrinal treatise. Well, that may be where it is most fully expressed and explained. But my dear friend, the story of salvation is the whole of Scripture. It is the great theme of the Bible. A great author of yesteryear named Graham Scroggie wrote an amazing book, an overview of Scripture. He called it God's unfolding drama of redemption. I love that because what he represented by the title of his book is that God's Word is all about the story of redemption. Someone has suggested that there are several threads woven into the fabric of the Word of God. From beginning to end, Genesis to Revelation, there's a black thread that represents the sinfulness of man. There's a red thread, a crimson thread, that represents blood atonement and redemption, the way of salvation. And then there's a golden thread that represents the promises of God. Yes, from beginning to end, the story of salvation is given to us on the pages of Holy Scripture. And so, for the next several studies, I want to talk to you about God's redemption timeline. Now, by way of introduction, uh, let me make two or three statements that I think are necessary. The first is this, God is not in time. Time is in God. You see, God is the everlasting God. He's the eternal God. He's above time and beyond time. God holds time in the palm of his hand and looks at all of it simultaneously. Think about that for just a moment. That's how he sees the end from the beginning. He's the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. God is not in time, and God controls time, which means that every purpose he has on this planet is being done on his time schedule, not ours. And I think this is extremely important. Not only is it true that God is not in time and God controls time, but we must always acknowledge that God's time is perfect. So when we speak of God's redemption timeline, we're really looking at the way God worked with mankind uh, from the beginning, uh, from Genesis coming forward all through the millennia to this present hour, and then to the fulfillment, the climax of his redemptive work in the revelation of Jesus Christ. So to begin our study, let's go to the end and work our way back. Turn with me today to the book of Revelation, near the end of your Bible, Revelation chapter number 13. There's a fascinating phrase found in Revelation 13 that you should have marked in your Bible and in your thinking. It is in the context of Satan doing his worst on this earth during the great tribulation age and all the powers of hell are being unleashed and people on this planet are worshiping him. Can you imagine uh, worshiping Satan's man instead of God's man. But it's in that context that we find this amazing phrase. Revelation chapter 13 and verse number 8 says of these people that all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Now, I'd like to talk to you about the book. Uh, there is a book, the Lamb's book of life. And in that book, there's a record of every person who belongs to the Lamb, every person who knows the Lord Jesus and has had their sins forgiven. I wonder, is your name there? Is there a, is there a record in heaven of your faith in Christ and his redemptive work in your life? God keeps very good records. But here's the phrase. 
It's the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. This is fascinating because we're in the book of Revelation. We're referencing something that happens in the gospel records, but he takes us all the way back before Genesis. Listen to the phrase again, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. What does that mean? It means that from the very beginning, before the Garden of Eden, before God ever even made man, in the mind and heart of God, Jesus Christ was already on that cross. It means that God's redemptive work is not his emergency plan, it is his eternal plan. I wish you'd write that down somewhere. Uh, Get this in your thinking. God's work of salvation, God's redemption was not a last-ditch effort Uh, a plan B. It wasn't something that took God by surprise and he had to figure it out. Uh, This was something that from the very beginning, the all-wise God knew that man would rebel against him and that he would have to give his own son to redeem fallen humanity. And someone may say, well, why on earth would God allow that to happen? Why would the creator even, even make man then if he knew that? Because God has always wanted one thing. He's wanted to fellowship with the creation he made in his own image. That's why he didn't make you like an angel. He didn't make you like an animal. He made you with a spirit, soul, body to respond to him with a free will, a conscience to choose and to refuse. Uh, He's made everything available that man needs, but now man must choose to accept or to reject. And so long before Adam and Eve were ever even created and placed in the Garden of Eden, from the foundation of the world, the Bible says the Lamb was slain. Now that would not happen for several thousand years uh, after uh, the incident that we reference in the book of Genesis with the fall of man, uh, but in the heart of God, God says it's as good as done. What does that reveal to us? Several things. First of all, it reveals to us God's eternal love. It means from the very beginning, God loved fallen humanity. There's nothing you can do to get God to love you any more, and there's nothing you could do that would make God love you any less. You see, there was never a day God started loving you, and there'll never be a day God stops loving you because God is love, and God loves you with everlasting love. So when we're looking at God's redemption timeline, it's a reminder that our eternal God loves us with everlasting love. Not only that there is eternal love, but also that there is eternal wisdom. Think about this, that God would begin to reveal to man in the Garden of Eden the need for a substitute, a sacrifice, blood to be shed. Uh, He would continue to reveal that to his chosen people, the children of Israel. He would give pictures of it all through the Old Testament until finally Christ comes, the Lamb, the final, full, forever sacrifice for sin. What perfect wisdom. So God's eternal love, God's eternal wisdom, and then it's also a revelation of God's eternal power. That God, against all odds, against all of Satan's uh, opposition and all of man's rebellion, all the circumstances and all the changing uh, settings of time could make this redemptive work complete exactly like he promised and intended from the very beginning. Get this phrase in your mind, the lamb, that's Jesus, God's lamb, the lamb that takes away the sin of the world. The lamb was slain from the foundation of the world. This is what we learn in God's redemption timeline, that though we are in time, God is above it all. He's the eternal God, and his greatest passion is to redeem mankind to himself. All praise to the lamb of God. Thank you for joining us today, and thank you for investing in the ministry of Enjoying the Journey. This is a listener-supported program. If you feel led to partner with us, please visit enjoyingthejourney.org, where you may securely make a one-time investment or set up a recurring gift. However God leads you to partner with us, thank you. And we hope you'll join us next time on Enjoying the Journey.